Now, my personal preference as I'm going through the hard reading module, and I know that it's going to be difficult to finish in the time limit, is to skip graph questions. Save them for last. I know they take more time. They're harder to understand, but that's a personal preference. Try to figure it out for yourself, but it's probably going to be some passages that you're going to start skipping around to make sure you just get the most correct answers possible, and this might be something that you leave to last. So let's look at how we should do it. The question is telling us just complete the text, right? So we're gonna understand this paragraph, and then at some point we're gonna to go to the graph to kind of get some information, but we need to really understand what the text is telling us to care about. So let's read that. Most of it is just kind of summarizing what the graph says anyway, but, but let's look at the whole thing. Participative pricing, in which purchasers choose the prices they pay for products, can enable sellers to capitalize on the heterogeneous values to consumers assigned to the same goods and services, but doing so requires careful messaging. Oh my gosh. Annie Pei Kui and Jennifer Wiggins recruited 171 participants ages 8 to six, 18 to 60 online for an initial study and 83 students ages 18 to 31 at a state university for a second study to test the effect of three different messages, pay what you can, pay what you think it's worth, and pay what you want on how much participants would pay for concert tickets. So again, a lot of this is kind of right here. The only thing we're maybe getting is is that this is the this is the like 18 to 60 crowd this is the 18 to 31 crowd uh and so these are what you know online people and these are students so i don't know if that's going to make a difference but it's something that's not on the graph so maybe worth paying attention to but let's see their results illustrate both the heterogeneity of consumer valuations and how sellers can benefit by prompting consumers to consider their own valuations so this is a great example of why you should skip certain questions. Most of you have no idea what that's even saying. But let's talk about some words that you do need to know. Heterogeneity means like uh, variety, basically. So it means there's a lot of difference. And if we look at the consumer valuations, look, even in both groups, there's a lot of difference. It goes from like 30 or 27 all the way up to 55 for the first group and then even higher for the second. So there's different, basically the rectangles are different heights. That's basically what this is saying. So that kind of seems true. And then the second part right here, how sellers can benefit by prompting consumers to consider their own valuations. Well, if you're the seller and the y-axis is the price, I guess this is the good thing right here and here. That's the highest price. So maybe this is what we want. Pay what you think it's worth. I don't know. Don't waste a lot of time trying to imagine what the blank is going to be, right? We got four answers. Now they're long, but let's see what we can get out of this. So, um, and the column is telling us just to support this. The students tended to value the concert tickets more highly than did the more age diverse group recruited online. Okay. So that's two versus one, right? The students, that's group two versus the age diverse group. That's one. So is that true? Um, yeah, maybe. Seems so. Um, but when considering what they could afford to pay, the students tended to choose a lower price than did the other group. What they could afford to pay, what they could afford to pay, uh, pay what you can, I guess, is that. S the, so then what? The students tended to choose a lower price? No, right? This is the students, right? So choice A is, is now telling us to compare this to this. But the students are choosing a higher price, right? Pay what you can. I, I think I'm reading that right. If not, comment. I'm sure you will, but that seems wrong. Plus, in from a dumb summary perspective, if I want the sellers to benefit, again, don't even want to be talking about the pay what you think it's worth. That seems like the one that's going to benefit the sellers. So talking about the pay what you can seems just like off. So already I'd be skeptical of that. But let's move on. Let's look at two. Uh, B, in all three messaging conditions, the group of participants recruited online tended to choose lower prices than did the students. So again, that's one versus two. And yes, the, the group one is lower than group two. So that, that seems right. But both groups tended to choose prices closest to the actual cost of the tickets when prompted to consider the ticket's value. Hmm, what's the actual cost? Do I know? I don't think so. What's the actual cost? I have no idea, right? So this is a great sign. And this is something that they do on these questions a lot is sometimes there is genuinely something that they're asking us to measure or compare but that is not in the chart. That is not in the graph. So this is just something I don't know. There's no way to know it. It's not in the. It's not here either. I don't think it's not in the in this. Yeah. Let's look at C. 
The students tended to value the concert tickets more highly than did the more age diverse group online. So that's again true. This is basically saying two is greater than one. That's that's true. But both groups tended to choose a higher price when considering the value of the tickets than when considering what they could afford or wanted to pay. Well, the value of the tickets, right? Pay what you think it's worth. That that is higher, and that does seem to be true, right? That's the middle the middle piece. <sighs> Seems good. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to pick it because I still am enough confused, but that seems right. Let's look at D. Within each group of participants, there was wide variation in the value that individuals assigned to the concert tickets. I'd say that's probably true. Now, wide variation, that's a bit of a subjective thing, but I'd say the difference between $30 and $50 is pretty wide. So, okay, uh, check. And that also matches with that idea of variety here that we talked about. But the students tended to assign a higher value to the tickets than did the more age-diverse group recruited online. Again, that also seems true. Two is greater than one. So here's, here's the issue with this is these both seem to be true. Again, if I'm missing something, put in the comments. It is definitely possible right now that I am misreading something. There's a lot to go on here. But one thing I do notice with these graph questions is sometimes the right answer is like doing a bunch of things right. And so, yeah, if, if we miss one of the facts that are, are is wrong, that, that would be a, a problem for us. But I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning towards C here because it is saying that there's variety, right? The, the students valued the concert tickets more highly. Um, I guess that's showing variety in what the consumers think. Uh, that students are different than other people, I guess. I don't know. And then the other part is there. The other part that the sellers are benefiting because we're talking about a higher price when we think about the value. That seems like it would be good for the seller. I don't think anything in D is talking about the seller. The student center to assign a higher value to the tickets. Again, maybe that's, maybe that's about the seller. There was wide variation. Yeah. Now the answer is C, but... Oh boy, this would definitely be one that if for some miraculous reason I actually had extra time to go back, I would go back and I would relook at this and I'd be like, oh, maybe I missed something. Maybe there's something deeper here. There isn't. This is about it. But uh, I, I do not feel 100% confident on this choice because there's just so much information and it's very possible I am misreading one thing and it's causing me to get something wrong that otherwise, you know, I, I, I should notice. So, do the best you can on these. There is not a lot of like major massive strategies that are going to turn this kind of hard question into very easy stuff. It doesn't work that way. There is no magic strategy that gets rid of all the difficulty. Some questions are just hard. This is one of those questions.